Good morning all and today I will continue our lecture on uh, biomedical signal processing and today we are going to look at uh, one of the applications which is QRS detection in ECG signal. Okay, earlier on we have reviewed some of the DSP techniques which is filtering, FFT, we have looked at the difference equations, we have looked at the Z transform. So now we are going to see how we are going to use this theory in the real biomedical signal application. So in order to do this, we are going to look at how we are going to detect the QRS wave from the ECG. So in previous lectures, we already see what is Q, what is R, what is S and besides this, we also know what is P and T. So QRS is one component in ECG where detection of this will lead us to the heart rate calculation. So before we proceed to heart rate and before we proceed to more difficult application in ECG, we need to first address the QRS detection problem. This is one of the fundamental and simple problem in ECG analysis. So if we look at this slide, we can see that the ECG can be decomposed into few components the QRS complex, the T wave and the P wave. So by looking at the Fourier transform or the spectral analysis of these components, we will be able to see the frequency content of the ECG signal. So we can see that like for example, the QRS complex contains frequency from around 5 Hz to 20 Hz. So meaning that in the ECG signal, we want to filter this component out because we only need the QRS sample. And we want to eliminate the other frequency components such as the PT motion artifact and the muscle noise. You can see that P and T is below 5. But motion artifact is some sort masking with the QRS. This is what we want to remove. So this is an example of filtering and we just want to filter out the QRS from the other components of ECG. Okay, and to detect QRS, there is many, 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 many algorithm. Okay, and one of the most famous and the fundamental and most traditional is the algorithm that is developed by Penn and Tompkins. This one is like um, developed as early as uh, I would say 1980s. And why we are going to look at this algorithm in this class is because this is established and this is proved to have accuracy at least 99.9%. And it has been tested with MIT database, Howard database and many, many database. So because this algorithm is stable, we will look at it in this class. But you must know that beside this algorithm, we have other um, detection flowchart such as like um, wavelet and these are all uh, quite um, I would say complicated and we might look at it at the end of this um, this semester but for now we will look at the fundamental which involves simple filtering so you can see that the whole algorithm is composed of band pass filter and this band pass filter is a cascaded low pass filter and high pass filter I will tell you later what are the functions or what are the results of bandpass filter. And then you will need to apply a differentiator. Differentiator is also another type of filter. And then we have squaring operation and moving average. Moving average is actually a smoothing function. And you will get the output which is the QRS from the ECG signal. How the ECG signal look like and how the QRS look like is what you are supposed to have in your mind. And I will show later. So you can see this is the first, if we go back to the previous slide, the first, I'm going to explain on the first um, low pass and the high pass. So the band pass actually is trying to eliminate noise. We have the low pass part. You can see that we want to eliminate the EMG and the 50 Hz power line noise. So we create a low pass filter with a cutoff of 11 Hz. And you can see in the slide the difference equation. Once you do the frequency response and the phase response, you are supposed to get uh, like how sh it is shown in the figure. Okay? And you can do exactly like what I've obtained here using MATLAB. 
once you do the low pass filter means that you will successfully eliminate the noise and then this is the high pass filter you can look at the frequency response it is actually eliminating the lower frequency components which is below then around 0 0.05 hertz and then look at the phase response it is a linear phase response so meaning that the filter is stable and once you have done with this we will go to the differentiation the differentiation is to obtain the slope information and overcome the baseline drift okay earlier i've shown one of the problem with the ecg signal is the baseline drift and how do we do this we uh, is the difference equation is shown in the slide and you can implement in matlab and you will finally get the output as also shown in the slide okay and the next step is squaring squaring is to emphasize the higher frequency component and attenuate the lower frequency component this is as fundamental as in uh, our high school where when you square a signal you will get an absolute value where everything will go positive so whatever um, amplitude you have will be doubled so you will trying to emphasize the higher frequency component and the lower part will be suppressed okay the last step is moving average as i said as i mentioned before the moving average is actually a smoothing filter it kind of smooths the whole signal and by the end of this operation you should be able to get a spike like signal as you can see in the slide so that in the next slide i'm going to show another example like in the previous slide you see the spike and the ecg signal is a normal signal in the next slide this is an uh, an example of ventricular bisgeminy which means that you have an extra uh, wave after the qrs you can see the normal ecg has been masked with another extra wave so when you implement this whole qrs detection algorithm we can see again only qrs has been amplified and all the other component has been suppressed okay and this slide okay this slide actually summarizes the whole process if you look at the first slide i mean a it shows the ecg signal recorded from a patient once you do the filtering the band pass filtering you can see the noise has been reduced you can see this in the b graph that means the second one okay and then when you do the differentiation the third one is showing the output of the differentiation and the fourth graph actually shows the output of the squaring operation you can see that the higher frequencies has been amplified and the lower frequencies has been suppressed and then lastly when you do the moving average which is the smoothing you kind of get a spiky signal where you can later apply a threshold and you will get the qrs detected okay so when you do this filtering you can look at the output in this way to see whether the algorithm is correct or not in another way you also can go back to your fft where you look at the frequency response and the linear response and make sure that what you are doing is correct so this is a wonderful application and you should be able to this, do this by yourself and these are the examples of other signals where you apply the qrs algorithm and you are supposed to get a spike signal like this okay and here i'm just uh, emphasizing again how when you get these waves detected qrs you finally will use a threshold to detect the highest point which is the r point and by getting this r point we will be able to calculate the heart rate when you get the heart rate eventually you will be able to calculate the heart rate variability and from the heart rate variability many many other applications can be done like detection of heart uh, sudden heart attack detection of myocardial ischemia detection of autonomic nervous system disorder and many many other things so this is a very fundamental application and by just using simple filtering such as band pass differentiator and squaring you will be able to detect the peak of the ecg signal so with this i end this lecture thank you very much